Hello, Gary Stearman. It's the 24th of July, and I'm preparing this update for Wednesday, the 25th of July. And let's talk again uh, about events in the Middle East, uh, just for your information. Uh, I have several headlines here that I want to deal with today. One of them uh, is a headline concerning a statement made by the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force. Syrian chemical threat targets Israel. Obama warns Assad against, quote unquote, making a tragic mistake. Of course, that tragic mistake would be attacking Israel. And I quote, senior Israeli military officers referring to the Syrian foreign ministry statement last Monday, the 23rd, that Syria would only use chemical weapons against external aggression, found, it, found in it a direct threat by the Assad regime to turn those weapons against Israel. It was Syria's rejoinder to Israel's vow to use force against those chemical weapons to prevent them from reaching Hezbollah's hands in Lebanon. And of course, that is uh, one of the major things that's transpiring right now in the Middle East because Hezbollah would love to get its hands on the chemical and biological weapons that have been carefully stored up by the Syrians all these years and, by the way, used by them. Uh, Bashar al-Assad's father, Hafez Assad, uh, actually uh, gassed 30,000 Kurds uh, a couple of decades ago. And the Syrians have accrued what is considered to be the greatest supply of chemical and biological weapons in the Middle East. Hezbollah is desperately trying to get its hands on those weapons to take them back to Lebanon, just on the northern border of Syria, or of Israel, in order to fire them at Israel, and would not hesitate to do so. And so, so comes this headline that I just read. We have here uh, from Arut Sheva on the 24th of July, quote, Israel is prepared to intervene militarily if Hezbollah gets hold of Assad's chemical weapons. And this was a statement made by Avigdor Lieberman, uh, Israel's foreign minister. And he was speaking in Brussels when he made this statement. I, and I, I want to quote from Lieberman again, quote, In the moment we see that the Syrians transfer chemical and biological weapons to Hezbollah, this is the red line for us. And from our point of view, it's clear that it would be a causus belli, a cause of war. In other words, the moment Israel sees Hezbollah laying its hands on any part of the chemical and biological weapons now owned by Syria, this would be a cause for immediate war as far as Israel is concerned. And Israel has now publicly stated, we will go to war if we see that happen. This is an escalation in the diplomatic status of Israel. Uh, Lieberman, uh, of course, uh, is a very intelligent man, very measured in what he says, and speaking in Brussels, Belgium, uh, if he made this kind of a statement, it, it really, really is a red flag for the whole world uh, that a war could break out very quickly there. Quote, we will act decisively and without hesitation or restraint, he said. It will be a completely different ball game, and we hope for the understanding of the international community. In other words, we're ready. Uh, if this happens, it's going to change all the rules, and uh, we're ready to go to war. He added that Israel knows that the terrorist organization Hezbollah wants to achieve access to those chemical and biological weapons and will stop at nothing to do so. Syria admitted on Tuesday that it has chemical weapons, but said it would use them only if an outside force intervenes uh, in the raging civil war that seems to have all but toppled the regime of Syrian President Bashar Assad. Syria has threatened chemical attack on any foreign force. This is from the New York Times, dateline July 23rd. Syrian officials warned, and this is last Monday, that they would deploy chemical weapons against any foreign intervention. So you have these chemical weapons being, in essence, the center of the struggle in Israel now. Hezbollah wants them. Syria wants to keep them. Israel wants to destroy them. And the United States has uh, urged Syria 
to keep those uh, uh, chemical and biological weapons in check and not let them out of their sight. The warning came out of Damascus, and of course this is the warning that Syria would deploy chemical weapons, veiled behind uh, an assurance that the Syrian leadership would never use such weapons against its own citizens, describing chemical and biological arms as outside the bounds of the kind of guerrilla warfare being fought internally. And so while essentially threatening to use chemical force, the Syrians are saying, oh no, we would never uh, use them against uh, anyone here in our internal territories. Quote, any stock of weapons of mass destruction or unconventional weapons that the Syrian army possesses will never, never be used against the Syrian people or civilians during a crisis under any circumstances. Uh, Jihad Makdisi, uh, Syri Syrian spokesman uh, in the foreign ministry, uh, had a news conference shown live on Syrian state television. And so uh, talk about speaking out of both sides of their mouth. On one side, uh, Syria is saying, anybody makes a move for our uh, chemical biological weapons is going to get them get the wrong way, while at the same time saying we would never use chemical and biological weapons within our own boundaries. Uh, hmm. Logic, anyone? <laughs> I think if they had to use them, uh, they would use them. <clears throat> and again, from Arut Sheva, repeating uh, a news item that we talked about just a moment ago, uh, dateline July 24th, Israel is prepared to intervene militarily if Hezbollah gets hold of Assad's chemical weapons, Foreign Minister Lieberman said. And so this made the headlines everywhere. Uh, it is perhaps the hottest bit of news out of the Middle East right now. Uh, and so uh, keep watching. Uh, of course, over here, it's the political season. Uh, the uh, elements of, of uh, escalation in the Mideast War hardly make the news over here, unless something really, really uh, dramatic happens. But as far as the build-up, as far as the uh, uh, political posturing concerning weapons of mass destruction in the Middle East, this doesn't even make our national news most of the time, which is one reason that during these updates I read some of these headlines that are coming out of the Middle East from Arut Sheva, from Yediot Aharonot, uh, from Debka File, and from other Middle East sources because it's my belief that we are headed for a very, very difficult time uh, in the near future. And of course, I would urge you all to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Uh, there is a promised blessing for those of us who do uh, hold up Jerusalem in prayer. As dispensationalists, we believe that Israel has been drawn back into the land and is prophetically promised the completion of the Abrahamic covenant in the latter days, meaning that Israel will become Israel. And not only that, it will become greater Israel through a series of wars that eventually award Israel its entire land grant as God promised Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. And so that's what we're watching. It is our belief, and I know that belief is not shared by everyone, but we teach dispensational, premillennial, pre-tribulational Bible prophecy, which states that the biggest event of the latter days is Israel's regathering, <coughs> Israel's empowerment, and finally the filling of Israel with the Spirit uh, in the days when she goes to war to protect herself. These are the days leading up to the kingdom on earth and the second coming of Christ. And so, I would urge you, keep apprised of the news, particularly out of Israel, and keep looking up.